In this best junglers video, we will be looking at the best junglers for you to carry in season 14. Obviously, the season has been a little bit strange with the shift of the new map, but as with always in this video, we're not looking at the champions that can carry quote unquote games. We're looking for champions that can solo carry, that can 1v9, that can win despite your team and in spite of your team. Split pushing, team fighting, objective, farming, ganking, you can do everything. And we will start off with Viego because he is good at absolutely everything. And what we're going to be looking at in this video is good champions overall, good specifically for low and good specifically for high. And I will tell you which are which. Viego though is good for everybody. He gives you that proficiency of early game aggression, that proficiency of maybe not using that aggression and just waiting for your moment at level six. The guy controls the map with ease due to his E. And even if, and I coach a lot of Viegos, you have situations where you're not exactly having the best early game, you have low KP. As long as you're 2-0-0 and you're in reasonable touching distance of the enemy jungle in terms of gold and experience, all you need is one big ass fight, one almost quadra kill, and you will win. And yes, that clip is literally from the coaching session. How amazing. What he also provides is the ability to take grubs easily. He also can build strong new itemization. And that's very important when you talk about carry junglers from season to season. Why is something good this season that wasn't good last season or vice versa? And that's because they're able to abuse all of the systems now in place, runes, items, pathing metas, and they're going to be good for most of the season. Sure, some of these in the video might be nerfed, but I've pretty much made a list where I think that won't necessarily happen anymore because it's already happened, yet they're still strong and a little bit under the radar. Likewise, what you have to remember with Viego is when you get the grubs and some dragons and some resets, push the map forward, look for those skirmishes and team fights. Please do not get caught up in the mid and the late game, farming it up and relaxing. He is not a champion that likes to relax and no champion in this list is actually a champion like that. You've got to keep your foot down, the acceleration going and allow yourself to casually take over games that you're behind in and that you're ahead on. It doesn't really make a difference. They're always good in any game state, provided you are a skillful jungler. And for that, you absolutely must head over to Vakayu.com. GG. I have a free jungle improvement resource as well as a dedicated program where we have jungle video courses, jungle coaching, coaching VOD libraries, weekly free video content seen nowhere else, as well as Q&As and patch note rundowns, as well as a private jungle discord. And if there's one thing I'm good at, it's making junglers reach their goals as we saw with the record number of people hitting them at the end of season 13. If you want to climb faster than anyone you know, jungle div every game you play, click the link below or head to thecaillou.gg. Next up, I'm putting forth the Evelyn. Now, Evelyn typically would say, okay, maybe more of a diamond plus pick. You know what? Yeah, she's kind of more good, if you can say that, in gold and above. But at the same time, you could honestly have success within low elo. It's just more difficult to execute, harder to play assassins for sure. But there ain't no reason why this beautiful champion can't succubus every single champion on the enemy team. The biggest thing with her is understanding that most likely you just have to give up grubs. They're at five minutes, you're not level six, it's a waste of time. You want level six first. Do the first rotation, get a scuttle, look for a gank. Maybe do some counter jungling in your second rotation, but ideally we're just looking to sequence again. Once you hit level six, now you can opportunistically look for those gangs, look to trap enemy junglers, go and take a dragon or a herald afterwards, go and take the second rotation grubs, but the first rotation grubs are a huge bait unless they're guaranteed free. Focus on six, focus on getting six, and then focus on being a bit more proactive. It's okay to have a lower CSPM on Evelyn. Yeah, she's a farming jungler, but she's also a dominating post six ganking jungler. But as always, if there's nothing going on and you're struggling to find those openings, now you can farm, now you can do your quadrants. Really, the only thing that's limiting you to carry with an Evelyn is your ability on the champion. And of course, she lacks a little bit of that turret damage I mentioned, but that's not really an issue when you have grubs that you can take, heralds you can snag, and you can still push plates after ganking, yes? No, you might not commit as much as a Belveth, but don't feel like you should always just gank and leave. If you need to push waves and do that kind of stuff, do those intangibles and you will find out that, you know, when you get to level 12 through 16, you're killing basically anybody. Oh, and of course, please remember to buy Banshee's Veil if you need it second, if you need it third, fourth. Don't wait too long when you have comps with a lot of CC. But the Lich Bane Deathcap tech, absolutely massive. Void stuff, people gonna die. After Evelyn, we have the one and only Kha'Zix, and it has to be Kha'Zix because he is the eternal AD assassin that barring a few periods in history has always, always been good. A lot of AD assassins go through these periods where they're not good. Kha'Zix has had way less than the rest of them. Not to repeat myself for the 2000s time in 10 years, 
but he has adaptability. But what might surprise you here is I don't necessarily mean the evolutions, which of course I do mean, but I mean atomization. Yeah, and I don't mean fighter and assassin, because of course, yes, you can go fighter or assassin. I do recommend assassin and just learning how to play it, but you have that fighter angle as well. You have the farming angle. If you want to sequence until six, you can go ahead and be more proactive and invade and gank a lot more. You can do whatever the hell you want in terms of game plans, but you can also do whatever the hell you want in terms of itemization as an assassin. I still recommend your ghost blade as a rush, but there is Psycho Sword Tech. There is going Opportunity Second. There is also going Edge of Night Second as necessary, building Serolda's Grudge. We have Hubris Second as well. There are Profane Hydro Rush Kha'Zix who prefer to farm a little bit more when they come online with a second item. That's kind of cool in that you're playing an Assassin with that much item diversity, that much pathing diversity, and of course you can be a Bruiser. Which means, because Riot loves you, and you're always relatively good, because there's always stronger champions that people want to ban more, you get away under the cracks, and again, the only thing stopping you from climbing is you. Finally, for the all-round good picks, I'm going to put Kane, and I have to. Because even though Kane might struggle in blue or red from time to time, there's always a way around it. You know, there's always some hidden airy kind of technology sitting in the back burner that you could bring out. There's always the basic default build that you can run. Hey, you know, I don't like any of the new items on board. Well, there's nothing wrong with Ghostblade Axiom Mark still. You know, oh, I don't like necessarily playing Rast without Gore Drinker. Well, you can build Eclipse, you know, they still have Black Cleaver and you still have Sterk's Gauge. Sundered Sky is actually not that great on him. You can go Eclipse into Shoujin. And of course, if you just wanted to build Profane Hydra into Sterex Gauge and whatever else, you could. There's a lot of item versatility. I'm only recommending a few builds currently. But the point is, he controls his farming tempo. He controls his counter jungling. He controls the cheese. He controls the mid and the late game with his form. He controls how much he ganks, how much he farms, what objectives he takes. Kane controls the game. And what that means is as long as you have the right decision making, you choose the right forms, the right runes, the right builds for your playstyle. And again, there's largely great ways to go, but you can subtly differentiate that as you like. You are a solo carry champion. You don't really care as much about what your team is doing. The epitome of 1v9 are all four of these champions. But also in lower MMR, the 1v9 champions differ slightly for different reasons. And finally, for the all-round picks, I actually had her in the high elo section, is Valveth. And I had her in the high elo section because she synergizes a lot with the aggressive playstyle of the last champion in this video. You'll have to wait to find that out, obviously. But what she actually provides in gold and platinum and above, again, not really great for low elo, don't recommend that, is she's really the beginning of understanding high-pressure jungling in a non-chi sense. When can I gank early, invade early, to really feel like the enemy jungler can be denied? This is something I talk a lot about in the platinum and gold course, the beginning of jungle denial. When you understand the concept that your entire game plan stems from your ability to shut down the enemy jungler. Not only that, you can't necessarily AFK farm with her too much. You could, and it does work, but you're not looking to play like that, right? You're looking to be proactive, to get a couple kills, to get yourself those grubs, those second grubs especially, to get yourself into the truest of true form, same for the Herald. You are looking to push the map and do the most damage to turrets out of anyone in the game. Use your Void Fishies, use the Mites, use the Herald, use Baron. If you're not using these things and you're not doing the most damage to turrets every game as Belveth, you have a problem. So much so that Crazy Valley in the private Discord got to Diamond using Belveth by doing the least damage, and I've mentioned this before, than I've ever seen from a Belveth main, but I've never seen a Belveth do more damage to turrets. Once you understand how to now fuse that damage to champions with damage to turrets and a good type package, there's nothing stopping you from challenger, again, other than yourself. And that's what we want from 1v9 champions. But because she also has that reset mechanic, the true damage, the heal, the CC, the mobility, and of course a damage reduction on that E, it's a total self-serving kit. And when you think of a champion that represents absolutely everything, right? Tankiness, mobility, sustain, resets, objective control, ganking, invading, farming. Is there another champion that does all of that as well as she does? I think that'd be a really fun debate to have. But in terms of 1v9 jungling, she's probably the queen. But also, in lower MMR, the 1v9 champions differ slightly for different reasons. But the first one up has to be Bran. Yeah, they slowed his clear speed down because it was way too strong and he was good everywhere. But in low elo, where everyone clears slowly anyway, you don't need to think to clear his brand. So the biggest variance between low elo players and high elo players in terms of how fast they can clear would probably be Nidley, maybe even a Karthus. But with brand, there's not a big difference. A pineapple sipping penguin can clear just as fast as basically a master tier brand. It doesn't take a lot of brain power. Which means when you clear quickly with him, and again, it doesn't matter if you miss spells because they come up so quickly, you do such a copious amount of damage just sitting in a bush and hitting your Leandri's Rylas and people are gonna die. You get so much HP from the itemization, it's absolutely ridiculous how strong this champion is in low elo when you just clear well, play for six, get objectives, burn people down, position correctly, press your R in the back of fights to knock them around like a comet that's lost himself. Because Bran can amplify his spells with a Q stun, with a W damage, with the E range, and he can do it really easily, 
He just doesn't suffer from the same negatives of being punished by bad positioning as other mage junglers. That means in low elo, despite the fact he was nerfed, his win rate is absolutely giga. Blue hot, if you will. Next up, we have Nocturne, because even though Nocturne's fallen off a little bit in high elo, he's still very good. You can still play him to get to Master Tier. Don't let anyone lie to you. You can. It's not that difficult. You can build all the good items with Hexblade, Eclipse, etc., and dominate. But in low elo, not only can you build these items, you can also pretty much very easily sequence, counter jungle, get grubs, get dragons, sequence again, and keep doing that for the next 20 minutes while split pushing turrets and getting plates, and only ganking like four times with your ultimate. However, if you need to fight a bit more and invade a bit more, you can do that. Even though Lethal Tempo has been nerfed in early ranks for melee champions, you still have Conqueror technology and you can still use Lethal because he gets better the later the game goes on, which means use that concept in your mind to scale better, to scale faster, to scale harder. I guess I should have said to scale stronger, but you get my point. Nocturne is good in low elo and he's good to get yourself to diamond. What I also wonder for these champions, and I guess you realized, is the ability to at least get diamond with any of them and of course get mastered to you with most of them. You're noticing that I picked them for this reason. That's why there's no Amumu. That's why there's no Lilia, because even though Lilia is that, she does get nerfed here and there a little bit too much compared to other champions, and also I feel like Bran kind of hits that niche a little better with way less skill. But yeah, I guess honorary mention to Lilia for this. However, Briar requires, well, less brain cells than Bran. It's on rails, jungling. You press W, you press Q, people gonna die. And now, you don't die either. Even though they've nerfed her assassin build all the way down to match the fighter build and really amped up the playstyle, which is what she was meant to be in the first place, what what that means is when you're simple to use stat check champion then obviously you're going to be better in low all the way up to diamond and weaker in high elo that's kind of where we sit at the moment so while you can use her again to get master tier plus it's a lot more difficult to execute compared to anything else on this list in fact she performs the worst in master plus but if you're lower in mid mmr then go ahead Use Briar, play it simple, play it like a sustained fighter. Please stop playing her like a ghost blade wielding lethality assassin. You're not gonna fly across the map and watch up people anymore. You need to play it like a human being, like a fighter, get in, disrupt, heal, sustain, disengage, and use your ultimate intelligently. If you do those things and control objectives and know where your early game power lies in terms of ganks and invades, there's no reason why you shouldn't be fed every single game. And again, all three of these win rates in low elo, absolutely obscene. So let's go ahead and jump up to the higher MMR pages. Please remember that every champion in this list can be played in every single MMR except for these ones. I only recommend any of you pick these up in around Platinum and above. Specifically Karthus, I think Emerald and above is a good place to be, but they just require a bit more in terms of taking over games, and that's why Karthus here is first. You need to spend about 1,000 hours in practice tool. You need to be like Shapeshift or Toots, where they just kind of live for that. Really optimize your clear. Get that thing down to the low 250s as frequently as possible, because that's where your advantage lies. Now, here's the thing about Karthus that's pretty damn cool. Most of you know Karthus as some 1v9 high damage, 20 a kill a game champion that can run into your jungle, exhaust you, and kill you without thinking. That can AFK farm, do nothing, and ult you and kill you. While there's a lot of truth to a lot of that, not entirely, but there's a lot of truth to it, you have to remind yourself as Karthus, you can play win condition gaming. You just need to do a hell of a lot of damage. You don't have the peel, you don't have the disruption in fights, but you have the damage. And as long as you are using your kit to do as much damage as possible, even if you have two kills and 25 assists, it doesn't matter. Do damage. Execute people with the R. Use it to poke before fights. You don't have to use your R to clean up. Use it to get HP war advantages such that they have to give up barons, give up dragons, and then use that to push the map and hit turrets. The champion in higher MMRs is just such an absolute takeover champion. Yes, he's not as strong as he has been, but he's still absolutely powerful 1v9 in the right hands, in the most skillful of junglers. So spend the time in practice tool, put on some music and some Netflix, get that shit down to muscle memory, and then become a good jungler. Understand tempo and how to abuse enemy junglers and don't just AFK farm, you are not old McDonald. Next up, I'm going to slap you with the Kindred because even though Kindred's had a bit of an up and down recently, they were dominant for a lot of season 13 and they're pretty damn good at the moment. And now you're saying, well, aren't there other champions that you could play? Aren't there better choices? Yeah, there are, but those are most likely to be banned, nerfed, or picked away. I wanted champions that you could use from Golden Up, that you could use to play an Emerald, that you could use to play in Diamond, not something that's only good in High Elo, you need it to be super good to execute. Yes, Kindred Rewards, a great aggressive playstyle. Yes, Kindred Rewards those who understand how to get early advantages over enemy junglers by having Supreme Pathing, that knows how to take over games by using one small lead to take five plates, to take six grubs, to take a herald, to take two dragons, to get in your face and never let you farm in peace again. You've still got Kraken Slayer Noom Quiver to full clear and play the game as necessary. You've got your Trinity Force and your newly buffed Terminus. Really, there's not a lot that can go wrong when you build those three items. And again, you can do the Black Cleaver third as well instead of the Terminus if you need that item. Hindred's one of those really beautiful champions that explicitly the game comes down to your ability to jungle and pilot them. That's it. There's no enemy team, there's no my team, there's no blame 
blaming outside forces. It is entirely and solely on you. While maybe a brand can complain in a few games that they just had no pride and they got invaded, while an Evelyn can complain that maybe they had too many control wards and again, they got invaded, you just don't really have that with Kindred. And again, most of all of these champions can 1v9 basically 9 games out of 10, but Kindred truly is the one where I think, honestly, you could win 10 out of 10 with no concerns and you can always put it on you. And you do that through your aggressive clears, through your aggressive invades, through leveraging that 5 to 10 minute mark in time in the game as the moment where you suppress the enemy jungler first and foremost, get yourself to four marks, and now everybody's free food. As long as you play the tempo of the map correctly and build properly, what's stopping you? And so obviously, you know, we have two champions here specifically for high elo. That's because I think all round is great for everybody. And high elo, I don't want to gate people at all. However, we have to give a shout out to the current version of Nidalee, which is so astro broken after the E buffs that she should be pick or ban pretty much in high elo. That being said, if she does get nerfed a little bit or changed in a healthier way, she will be maintained as one of the best solo carry junglers in the game for season 14. She allows you to do a lot of the things Kindred and Belveth do, but also heal your team and absolutely save them from being their dumbass selves. Hey, ADC, you missed position. Here's a heal that's bigger than a Soraka R. Hey mid laner, you shouldn't have tower dove, don't worry, I can save you. And she's doing all of this while full clearing or invading or doing whatever ranged junglers do to abuse all the melee junglers. That's why we pretty much only have, what, three? Nidalee, Graves, Kindred? It's because they're kind of obnoxious. However, if you are mechanically, if you're a god basically, and you understand jungle like, well, a god, I guess. So basically, if you're Kenyan or think you could be Kenyan, pick Nidalee. But if you just want to become a jungle god in general and climb to whatever rank you want, click the video on your screen now. It will do exactly that.